because what seems strange to me, the next point is, Jesus learned obedience. Does that seem strange to you, that the Son of God had to learn obedience? Learning, working, he had to. It tells us this in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8 says, Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. See, just as those sort of things would have hurt us that Jesus faced, they hurt him. He had plenty of suffering before he came to the cross. And it says he learned obedience. He knew what his purpose was, that he was to be the salvation of our, for us, that he's, he would pay the price for our sins. He knew what this was going to be, of what it required of him, that he would give his life for us. And yet he still chose to remain in the will of God and to complete the task. He chose to remain obedient. As Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. Philippians 2 8 where it says, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus is our example that through humility we will learn obedience and in believing that God will bring to pass what he has promised. And how did Jesus do this? How was he able to do this? It was by staying in relationship with his heavenly father. He always took time out of his busy lifestyle to seek the will of the father and to remain in him. Right from the very beginning of his ministry, where you read in, in Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, it says, In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. And right to the very end, he maintained that relationship with his father with prayer in seeking him. Because if you turn over then in Mark to chapter 14 and verse 32, this is right at the very end. They came to a place named Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here until I have prayed. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be very distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch. And then he went a little beyond them and fell to the ground and began to pray that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. And he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away and prayed, saying the same words. You know, we're not a, able to comprehend all that Jesus has done and suffered for us on our behalf. But we have his example that he remained steadfast in believing and trusting and following the will of his heavenly Father. And his words are to us in verse 38 there, keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. 
the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we need to work at maintaining a vital relationship with Jesus through prayer and reading his word. And this is what will keep our level of belief right up at the top in believing and trusting in God. That we will then remain steadfast so that we'll not try and take things into our own hands and bring to pass the promise that God has made like Abraham did. That we'll wait on God's timing to bring it to pass as David did. And that when we stuff things up, as we're all likely to do, to know that with repentance we will be given another chance to go through and, and to fulfil the promise that he'd given us, just like Peter did. And we're to follow Jesus' example in believing through times of temptation and when family members and critics and friends all try to stop us. That we will know the need to learn obedience through humility. And that to make prayer and a living relationship with God be what undergirds all of our lives. You see, this takes commitment and effort as John 6.29 said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Are you believing in God? Do you believe in Jesus whom God sent? He's left us this example and it's just said, this whole book is full of the experiences of people who've walked with God and who've trusted him and have learnt that when God's put a call on their lives, that he will bring it to pass. What's and all, the good and the bad that they did. We can learn from them and from their experiences. So do you want to do the work of God? Are you prepared to do the work of God? Are you prepared to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, whom the Father sent, that we might, believing in him, have eternal life, that through him we might have everlasting life. May this stay with you this week and I'm sure Satan will in some way or other come and try and throw things at each of us. It's different for every one of us. What's, what temptation one faces another, it wouldn't mean anything to another one. But remember, we have all these examples in the word of God to keep us, to keep us. And that we can say, as Jesus said to Satan, go Satan. He commanded him to go, that he would remain firm in the will of God. May we all do that too. Um, we all need each other. So... Can we just finish by singing again, bind us together? Because it's this then.